Anyway, so I discussed that with Chief Thompson and I, and I said if that was something, because changing the ground sublease is a, a major undertaking, and it means going up to the chancellor's office and this and that. But when I when I talked to him about it, he said, well, that does seem like a logical solution if that was something that was supported by the community. And if you tell me that it is, then I will pursue it. So you know. And I, and I'm here to tell you that my throat in this concept right. <laughs> has gotten it's negatively impacted. Okay. I mean, that was an idea of just. Yeah. 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 Some of our more in the yeah. I will sue you if you change my ground sublease and put things in the way. Thank you, sir. Well, I mean, to me, that's still something that could be discussed I at guess, a broader I, level yeah, rather than I, assuming I, that I one or two people who don't, you know, who might be opposed to it. Because it is a, it's a solution. It, one way or another, to my thinking, one way or another, the owners are going to pay for those expenses, either in increased dues for tributary right, reserves or, direct, or, direct or directly. And, and it's, it's not uncommon for a townhome to, to have those obligations be an owner's obligation and then rather to, than to balance that if they were to contemplate going that way then it could be that when you sell that you could add it might be add i mean i started home, thinking so about that well i started thinking about that and that sounds all great until i get to the point of that that if you want to be on equal par with the deta or detached homes they don't have that option so it might be deemed a little bit unfair, although they don't have a, any makeup either. I think yeah. that could be addressed, Miriam. I, it sounds to me like there's no interest in pursuing it, but would well, you I'm mind? I'm not sure there's no interest. Okay. So I, okay. I believe every option should be on the table okay. as we try well, to fine. solve yeah. this problem. And I just, it was just something I threw out, and maybe I took it already too far, but let's I, see what I happens. Would like, I, would just, I know we'll revisit this later, but yeah. I would like to know number-wise, and I think you said to me that you had this, is if you were to take out the windows and the furnaces, windows, we don't even know how many of them are actually under warranty, right. so that's an issue, or maybe we do, hold on. But what what would that raise the reserve percentage to? If, yeah. Just so, to so maybe discuss. We, so what we've learned about windows is basically none of them will be under warranty at the point in time we need to deal with them. Yeah, that, that makes sense. That, so that, is, that is what we have learned about windows. So. So the warranty issue is not a not an issue. Yeah. We're all okay. So to, so again, that was just my kind of a, a thought that I that I had that I wanted to bring up to the group, but you know, to be considered or not later on, just you know. Well, we the finance committee put that issue on the table okay. uh, as a discussable item, right? And it has has been discussed. Okay. Nobody's moved forward because okay. we That's made fine. the assumption that we could not change the ground sublease. Right. And but if we can change the ground sublease, if that's a possibility, right. then I think it goes back on right. the table to be discussed well, and vetted. I personally think that it can be changed, but don't ask me how long it would take. <laughs> so you do need to keep going down the road of, of uh, budgetary solutions. I mean, that, that I understand. Okay, so, right view. Hello. Da -da, Sorry you're about on. the delay. I was trying to uh, get situated with the parking that Rosa was kind enough to, to help us with. So let me let me introduce this. Is, this is Brightview UG Cams um, and the community's uh, landscape um, uh, maintenance contract we have with them. Um, following last spring, we did when we had put it out to bid, and we had five six contractors then come back with a maintenance contract. We um, put a design together that we had those same contractors bid. And at that point, when those those mock-up um, came back, the Brightview of the ones that were viable, Brightview was the lowest bid. Okay, and so then, um, as they started their work about September, October, I approached them and I said, "If we would do this design build, what would you recommend, plant palette-wise, knowing the irrigation system because they've been working with it for three months?" and various things like that, what would they do? So they came back with a presentation and um, came back with a number, and as we were talking about it, the community, and along with um, um, site authority, um, suggested and recommended that, uh, insisted that we go ahead and put it out to bid as an RF, RFP. And so we did that, um, then we sent it to five bidders, 
of one uh, declined uh, from the previous list and three and four um, bid. There were three viable ones of which Brightview was, was the low bid again. And so with that, um, we talked to them and said, um, we have, I also went back based on talking to the landscape committee on the HAC because their price came back at $338,000. The budgeted amount that we had in the budget was $500,000. So I went back to Brightview and said, what, what could you do with the money that we have? And so they came back and um, came up with a couple solution, uh, basically the main thoroughfares. And some of this had influence in conversation with um, the apartment owners as well. Um, so, so with that, they came back and um, the solution was say incomplete and in the sense that there were those that were um, served and a great majority of particularly the townhouses were um, kind of um, left out of the picture um, with the five hundred thousand um, dollar budget and so so what we've done is we we looked at it and said what would be the options or how how might we treat everyone equi equitably and address the entire project. And so that's where we are now. And so um, what, we'll, what you'll see is what they recommend, and then um, from a money standpoint, some options of how we might be able to get to that money based on what the ground sublease says, and um, whether that's viable and, inter and we're interested in moving that, that way forward or not. Um, that's what this is, we took to the HAC, and several people have come back and talked to me since then, um, asking for some clarifications, and I basically told them the same story I just told you. And um, some of them wanted a little more background, and so that's where we are. So this is Lazaro Ramos, and I'm gonna get the last name wrong. And this is Jose, and um, Jose, Jose, Jose is, is the one that did the majority. He's a landscape designer, and so he's the one who put it together, and um, so the two of them, Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I doesn't know. I mean, we, um, Rick, your face looks familiar from uh, Tuesday. So here we are again, just kind of like kind of go over the same uh, methodology. And so we are very thrilled and pleased to partner with you guys to kind of offer you some uh, options, solutions, uh, uh, comprehensive, uh, inclusive. So I'll probably let Jose kick in the, the presentation since he was the one that put this together and I think it will flow more naturally since he was the one from day one kind of working on this project. So I will take you through the methodology of how we put this together, how we broke it, and we'll just go back and forth between the two of us kind of explaining, uh, explaining the different sections. Okay, um, so let's start it off. Um, so how we looked at the you know site as a whole was we observed it and saw the plant material that was either overgrown um, it got too big for its area and they were we know maintenance people in the past and us now they have to hedge it too much and some of it doesn't even flower anymore um, and then uh, this old plant material a lot of it was the lantana uh, bougainvillea, some of the flax is just really overgrown. Um, Piddlestone wheeler, the wheeler's dwarf is also he's been hedged a lot, and a lot of this plant material has just become pretty um, woody, um, so it's just not appealing anymore. Uh, and then just to create a unified plant palette, and the uh, plant palette that we used was based off of the uh, phase two um, plant palette for the new development. Um, and that was from suggestions from uh, Jake. Um, so that's where some of the plant material uh, was incorporated. Um, and you just all around to install colorful, uh, California friendly plant material um, to liven up the uh, community as a whole. And um, the irrigation, we're keeping uh, most of the irrigation intact and just uh, upgrading and adjusting as we go, um, which did bring down costs. And that was a suggestion, you know, Jake wanted to do this, and we kind of talked it over, you know. Well, I, I think from all the work we've done on this over the last two and a half years, 
we cannot afford at this point in time to go where many of us would like to go, which is to an irrigation system that is drought friendly. So we have to stay with an irrigation system that is less drought friendly and try to adapt it as best we can. Um, but, but eventually, given where we're sitting, a cost that's not in the current uh, reserve study <coughs> is to convert the uh, irrigation system to a drought-friendly irrigation system because that's the world in which we are we are living and will continue to live. So it, there's a there's a cost out there that we are definitely kicking down the road uh, and. You'll see as we talk dollars that we really have no other option but than to do that. Um, so how we try to you know break the property down into smaller pieces um, so we could kind of narrow down the cost a little better was to separate the different building types. Uh, one was a apartment A, which was the ones where they have the courtyard in the middle. Um, apartment B's, which are kind of standalone kind of apartment buildings. Um, townhome A's, uh, which are just the bigger um, blocks um, with the kind of thoroughfare in the middle. And then townhome B's, which is sorry, a smaller kind of building. Um, single family homes was just a whole block. That's how we broke it up. Um, and then pool areas, just the two pool areas. And the roundabouts, um, those are from, we use the design that um, there was already a design out there, and we just used that and adapted the plant palette uh, to fit what plants we had. And then these are just some uh, approximate costs um, uh, per each type, um, and we'll get deeper into the final costs later on. And so now we're gonna start with some before and after pictures of apartments. So this is, uh, a little bit more broken down the apartments so in yellow is what we call uh, apartment A's <laughs> and there's uh there's like four five or yeah there's seven apartment A's um we're missing one over here we're missing two but they got lost a little bit um but there's two more right here and then there's 13 apartment B's which are the cyan color um, so that's how we just try to narrow down and break up the different pieces of this property. And then here is a before, this is a before picture of one of the courtyards in the, in the apartment A. Um, so this, we would leave some of the birds of paradise and then uh, fill in where we need to, bring in some sundowner formiums um, which are, they tolerate the shade because those areas are very uh, shady. And then some um, two different color kukuras, which are also, uh, they withstand the shade. And then under the oaks, we propose some uh, California gold uh, gravel. Just because not, nothing really, it's really hard to get things to grow under oaks and there's a bunch of roots and the dropping so um, that's what we kind of thought would work best uh, in those areas. And next up is the uh, inside the other courtyard, the bigger courtyard. And then in here just to bring a little bit more color, uh, we brought some coleonemas. Um, which are the uh, yellow. yellow plants and some uh, cordylines, electric pinks. Um, they have this vibrant pink color. Um, so just brighten up that courtyard and keep the grass. Um, and then this would be the uh, outside entrance area. And so here we brought in a couple of different plants. Um, we brought in some uh, Dianella Casa Blues, um, <coughs> we got the Attenuadas, <coughs> False Agaves. Uh, we continue with some Bishop <coughs> Paradise and some Salvias and little Coleonemas down the side. And I, I just wanted to, I, we mentioned this uh, yesterday, but just, just so, so we so we're still on the same page, I think that the picture uh, is is uh, it's a like it's gonna probably take about three years for it to 
three, four mm -hmm. and I'm sure it looks, <coughs> it looks like this. So it's, this is kind of the concept. So I just want to make sure that we are still on the same page on that. And so this would be one for the apartment Bs. And just kind of continuing the same plant palette uh, with the Coleonemas, um, the quarter line electric pink, and in the back, uh, some Wistringias. Uh, what? What's the plant in there? Wistringia. Wistringia. Blue gem. I, we'll have the plant palette. Oh, can you take oh, a look? Palette at the very end, just so that I hope you can see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So this is a plant palette. Um, the names you see in red are plants that are on the phase two plant list. Um, and the ones that aren't, we you know, brought in or are already on the property. Um, so here you got the false agave um, at the top left. Uh, right next to it is the salvia Santa Barbara. Um, and then philodendron xanadu, that also does well in the shade. So um, this is all shady, excuse me? Some of it, yes. Okay. Um, no, other, it's shady. Yeah, some of it would be for like the front areas the where it does get more sun. Okay. But um, this plant palette does have a decent amount of shade. Uh, plants are shade tolerant plants. I would say that out of this one, this one and this one tolerate shade. The other ones would be used in the sun areas. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I don't think they're. I'm not even sure the birds of paradise are particularly watching mine. I don't even think the birds of paradise are particularly I'm so anxious to have mine taken out. Mine have gotten quite kind of woody and they don't bloom yeah. in, in heavy shade. And then well, uh, I think that we've got to confuse the other ones. What I think the way we described it yesterday is that this is your shade plant palette. Mm -hmm. You know, probably this is your sun. The other ones, right. they could go either way. Yeah. Um, but these were some we did definitely put in the shadier areas. Um, you have the hookeras, um, the purple and the lime green, the agave attenuatas, um, the formium yellow waves, and the quarter line electric pinks. So we wanted to put in plant material that uh, stays colorful year round, um, and you don't have to hedge as much, so it does it. It won't really get woody um, for a while. Um, so that was kind of our main purpose. So the question got asked last night from you and Phil mm -hmm. uh, about what the lifespan of this plant palette is. I, I think uh, we're probably looking at good, I mean, plants are kind of like humans in a way, but I would say that if they're cared for properly, fertilized properly, uh, adequate watering, I would say that 10 years, uh, but you know, like that, that's probably a good, a good, uh, we don't have replacements for these things out there in the, in the reserve study in 10 years. So what would we need to do in order to give this uh, the life expectancy that's in our reserve study, which is in the, fi in the 15 year range? I mean, obviously you're like, I mean, there's like plants that I consider very foundational plants foundational plants uh, like your, your uh, uh, what yellow way for me and your atenuadas. There's perennials which bloom more frequently but they, they don't hold up as long as because their root system is not as deep. So whether we go with something, I mean, if you start, if you, if you really wanna go towards something that is gonna live for 20 years, 30 years, you're probably thinking about go, going seriscaping you know, where you are more like in a desert looking uh, situation, because that's probably the stuff that holds the best. Uh, at that point, your existing irrigation wouldn't work because you would have to probably ret just retrofit everything. Right, so, so it's it's the catch-22 of what we can afford to do now. I, I, I hear you. Yeah. I think also that we need to think about adding into the budget a replacement, something that was never really ever budgeted for. Well, you'll, you'll be happy to see $24,000 in next year's budget for plant replacements. Right. I mean, I think part of Bright Views next contract or future contracts should have some sort of, I don't even know, 25 plants a, you know, a year replacement in or something like that. You know, we always start that's more substantial that. than that now. Yeah. 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 That's based on, that's what, that's based on, the new budget is based on the 
what we've been experiencing since Greg, you came on. I, and I also think that, and I don't want to open up the kind of ones, but I, I mean, we'll definitely, if we, like whatever the, you guys decide as a community to do, uh, I think that we will honor the life of the plants for as long as we are here, but I also think that part of, part of the integrity of the plan is also like water management, uh, how like pruning practices, uh, making sure that people understand that they're not supposed to come and like come through here and, and shoot them like like balls because that's not that's not what the plan is supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be natural, mm -hmm. and I think that's the, the that's the whole idea of making sure that people understand that this is meant to stay natural, and not becoming balls or hedges. And I see that there really aren't any hedge shrubs here. And I think from an ongoing maintenance point of view, that actually makes a ton of sense. And that's why we picked most of the plants we picked is because um, these are, you wouldn't have to touch them as much, basically. Um, so now we go into the townhomes. And so this is breaking them down as well, like we broke up the apartments um, as townhome A's and townhome B's. Um, the townhome A's you see in yellow, uh, and there's 28 of those on the property. And the townhome B's, there's 20 on the property. Yeah, same plant palette, um, just carrying that on. Like we said, we do want to create a cohesive um, plant palette for the whole community um, and use what we can um, that's still here. Um, and that was one thing that we did to bring down the cost as well is what looks good will keep, what doesn't, you know, will come out. So not everything will be taken out? Mm -hmm. Okay. So take this argued these pictures because these are actually pictures from mm -hmm. one of our shadiest streets and as you uh, but they were taken in the winter when there were fewer leaves I'm not sure birds of paradise are going to bloom nicely on Landing Cove that argues for using Landing Cove as a part of a phase one in order to figure out whether or not this plant palette works in that space I, I think that's reasonable And so this is just a plant palette using the same plants as well um, that we used in uh, the apartments. Couple, a couple different ones in the apartments in here. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, this is single hawk family homes and there's just eight blocks in total um, on the property. And you see them in yellow, highlighted in yellow. Or after um, we included a couple different plants here um, kangaroo paws um, and then some atlas fescue uh, the agave fenuatas that are already there are already some on the property uh, on those blocks as well and uh, what we would do is reuse the ones we can and trim them up um, to look nicer because some are overgrown um, and some Callistemum and Little John's in the back. Um, there's, you can't put too many plants here because these areas are very narrow. Um, so we kept that in mind. And the plant palette as well here. Um, the new ones would be the Callistemum, uh, Little John's, um, the Atlas Fescue, the Kangaroo Paw, and the Aloes Gerata. And the red ones would would be the ones from phase two of uh, that plant palette. Do any of these grow out to be ground cover? No. Okay, thank you. I think that one, the only one that probably grows a little bit more widely, four by four, is probably the calistamin. Okay. The other ones, they tend to stay pretty. So, just personal preference. The calistamin and the kangaroo paw. 
I find quite appealing. Thank you. And because the Course can enlight, grow to be more of a, a loose semi-ground cover, that might um, minimize the amount of uh, mulch that we would need in the initial. Now granted, there'll be mulch to begin with, but then we'll have less mulch as, as they grow out. So seeing some of that in places where you have the bright <coughs> and kind of chartreuse yellow <laughs> um, plant, um, which I personally find less appealing, but I'll turn over one book. <laughs> so in the proposal, would all, all the townhomes that are in the shade would be the same, and all the trees that could be different variations for the townhomes in the sun? And the same thing with, with the homes? Mm -hmm. it, so it's just, it's, but it's, if they're in the shade, they're all the same. The whole size block is the same. No, oh, I'm sorry. We were told at the meeting that we could opt out of certain plants if we did not like them. Mm -hmm. yeah. like I so can't this is this isn't set in stone. This yeah. is what we're presenting. It. Right. You guys so are the owners, and so your opinion counts, basically. So one of the things we had talked about was potentially allowing each owner to have a choice, a limited list for whether they're shady or sunny. Like of an that. accent plant that they could pick for their particular uh, installation. Is that still possible? Because I know you've shaved a lot of cost out of this proposal. I is think it's still? possible. Um, it's just something we need to discuss. Um, and you know, if we want to do it, we can show those numbers as well. Um, so, I mean, anything's basically possible. I think um, what they're saying is just like, I, I think that wouldn't change the whatever quantities we, if I understand it correctly, what she's saying is, do I, me, me as a homeowner, can I choose, if you give me these five options in the shade or these five options yes. in the sun, can I pick these three that I like and not those, not yes. those three? I think, I, I don't think they're telling us to change the quantities. I think they're just trying to see if they would have that ability to pick just those three that, I never want a bird of paradise on my property in town. Yeah. So that's just me, though. That's not my neighbor. So if well, it's, I, think, I can I take out that one. Can be right. there. Uh, well, and we, and can, we, we had talked about potentially yeah. there being a, a, a limited list, yeah. maybe yeah. two or three actually accent plants that are going to get bigger and be grander over time that folks could select from if they chose that. Yeah. And, and this, this came as a suggestion based on what we did the townhouse uh, painting that we that each of the owners got to choose the color of the room and so it's in some regards saying okay here's here's an accent plant you know where we could put it um, here here are several one several so there's also by you know opportunity for owners to have input that it isn't um, how would you say it's kind of in this area this this is you tell us kind of thing. Given what it's we're, more personal. It's yeah. more personal. Well, given what we're going to need to do in order to be able to afford this, um, I think we need a mechanism that allows us to facilitate as much community buy-in as we can get. Yep. This is one relatively straightforward way I think we might be able to do that. Yeah. Are all plants the same cost? Yeah, it's just kind of I mean, once we put in the cost, because we based it off the square footage, uh, that was the best way for us to put numbers together. So right. uh, it's very easy for us to say, in the s here's a plan palette for the single family homes. If there's a plan that you don't like, oh, just tell us. And we, I mean, it's, I mean, the managing piece of it would probably, we would have to figure out a way <laughs> yeah. uh, to kind of like figure that out what's the best way to do that. Yeah, I guess that's something. I'm just getting at the, that you might not. I, I, I would like. To, I, I think so you'd want so to avoid. Our, so, so our list of plants would have to all yeah. be basically similar prices. Yeah. yeah. Our choices would right. need to be. So you don't have to avoid gathering all the information, but right. they can go back and reprice everything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's all. I'm so at. I'm assuming that we get told here's a list of yeah. five pl accent plants. Right. They all cost right. relatively yes. at the size we're going to install relatively yeah. the same fine. price, yep. and a choice can be made. I mean, it didn't cost, there was no differential cost for the door color choice. Right, yeah. No, I'm just asking the question, so, yeah. yeah. But this I think it's a good idea, though. Yeah. But you still have the same plant. <coughs> sure. 
choices of plans, you still have that continuity within the community, yeah. but then you get that that Design. input of. And, yeah. it, and it may be that that is it's something, the flowers, you know, it's, it's something that is really an accent, you know, yeah. not, like you know, yeah. or, or something. And, and if you go down, um, down Anna Cavanaugh, on many of the, the uh, single families, they do have accent plants, you know, and it may be in those particular locations, we don't take them out, you know, it's like, because obviously people have put them in on their own. And so it, it may be that that is something that, that we, we work with people on, you know, what we keep, what we don't, what you, what you like, you know, Within, within limits, you know, we don't want to spend hours and hours at each, each well, place. Well, we don't, we don't want to, we're moving towards a plant palette that's going to hopefully reduce our cost of ongoing operation, which at least will hopefully make us inflation neutral on those costs, if at all possible. Um, so we don't want to destroy that. Mm -hmm. But I, the more we can do that lets people have an individual within a context personality. Agreed. To plumb the plants, pretty much, I think. Mm -hmm. I think if you if you get go down that road of letting certain houses have, let's say it's not a plant in this palette, but it's you know in good shape. At what point do you say, okay, that person can keep that, but this one, well, we don't really like. I mean, I think we do want to have like a nice. Palette. I mean, if we're paying for it, we want it to look nice as a community, but still not losing the individuality. And I think if they said, like, okay, this is a combination. If you want this in the back, this would go nice with in the front. You know what I mean? So we can rely upon them to yeah, kind of guide us with that. But right. then you still have that say. Yeah, I think it would look not so much like a step for like community. I think, <laughs> I think you want it to look like. Um, Continuity, but yeah. not all the, the same. The Does way the way I see it is like when you go to a restaurant and you get the menu and you say this comes with the menu and but you have this substitution. If yeah. you don't want to get the baked potato, you right. can get the Swiss salad. So right, right. That's kind of the way I understand it. Yeah, I, I think that's a good. That's a good analogy. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that's an excellent yeah. analogy. And, and I personally, if you guys identify existing plantings, even if they've been done by an owner that you think you can maintain reasonably, that they fit in with what you've done. The fewer plants we have to buy, the better. <laughs> so if there's something there we can reuse, we right. ought to celebrate that within, within the limits of what Miriam said. So we're gonna move on to the roundabouts. This is the big board picture. Again, like Jose said, I think this came off of a landscape architecture plan. So we just pretty much modify the plan palette that we were gonna use with stuff that we are already using so that it kind of, it's a cohesive uh, uh, mm -hmm. idea. And, and it's all these plans were from phase two. So I think it's a good transition from this phase to a new one. And it's a pinwheel effect. When yeah, you go yeah. around it, mm -hmm. right. So yeah, same exact design, just okay. substituted plants. And we chose, I think it was like, I don't know, a quick face slide. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this was just kind of the uh, the uh, thinking on it. Um, the uh, This was a plant palette. Uh, this is, yeah, this was, um, was this first one? Or the second one? I'm not sure, I mean, this is, we put it together. I think this is the the whole plant palette we have on the roundabouts um, right here. These are all the substitutions um, right here. If I saw the vanilla, mm -hmm. so yeah. The, the, the so these would be all the substituted plants um, on the. So the upper the upper per plan should be in red. The during the phase two, and we're we're this doing the phase two substitute. You, no, these are all on there. I think this slide got a little messed up, uh, but these are all the plants we are using. Uh, and then this was just going off of the bid that we um, gave to uh, Jake 
uh, as well as along with the other contractors. So we point you to the bottom right hand corner, 739,000 basically in round numbers. And that does not include, you'll notice that the roundabouts are not mentioned on this sheet. It doesn't include roundabouts and it doesn't include any project manager. So we are. Uh, who is the project manager? Um, that's, so that's an open conversation. An open conversation. Okay. okay, thank that's you. Open Before you get into this, I have a, a jot it down a couple of notes. And, um, uh, what about the alleyways? This includes all the alleyways? I was thinking that, Joyce. There are plants for the alleyways included. Um, yeah, this is just for the main roads, the frontages. Um, on the townhomes, yes, there's alleyways included. Um, not on the single family homes. Um, I don't think we put plants for those. Uh, but the townhome ones were the ones that kind of need the most um, in the alleyways. Um, well, I live in a single family house and I can say, we ought to think about that. Uh, can you go to the map of the whole entire complex? Yeah, when you have the phases. <coughs> Here we go. When you say the uh, the town center, that is in, that is included in with what the apartments basically. The the town center in the conversation with the town center, that they agreed because they own the town center, that they would um, do similar what we decide on or their some kind of plant palette around that that the owners would be responsible for that. And that would be along the roads and the sidewalks around the property? This is the town center, I mean, besides well, along the sidewalk in the front where they did correct. run the rental office, that would it do the whole thing? We're, in, when I asked them to give us a price, I said the entire thing, okay? And, and the conversation is, is, in my conversation with multifamily about it, was that I suggested they do the whole thing. Because you know it's like it is there. It is there. So retails. that includes the parking along the you know, where the music building is. It right. would basically be back. Right there, Jay. It goes through here. Oh, okay. <coughs> uh, so that hillside that all the students park along that street and they cut up this into side? the town. Yeah. 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 So it would be yeah, redoing that whole hillside stuff and everything. It's yeah, I mean, it's a, it basically comes up to this this sidewalk. Okay. And it's on massive. the other side of the sidewalk. It's, it's a lot. It's massive. Yeah. So you're talking about all that lavender that's along that parking lot, or whatever yeah. that is, that's there, uh, rosemary or whatever. Yeah, there's, that there's, isn't there anymore. Yeah. There's, yeah. There's, there's rosemary on the parkway. Right. And then there's the there's a section between. Right. The right. Okay. And, uh, so it pretty much wraps around, and then whatever planters we have on this side of this walkway, this way. Right. So pretty much all around. Okay. All that area. That is massive. Right. So in the blue section over there. Uh, down by the new phase development, you only have two of the plants. You've only selected two plants um, that are in that are going to be in the phase two. It'd be nice. And the single family homes oh, get four plants from the from the future phase. Yeah, I think it would be because that abuts the new phase. It would be prudent to maybe make three, uh, you know, plants picked from the palette of the new phase. Yeah. Just a suggestion. Yeah, the only thing that was difficult with the new phase was that all of those were all sun, full yeah. sun. Um, so that was... Uh, well, we started out as full sun, too. Yeah. Now you see, yeah. 15 <laughs> years later, we have, you know... Huge trees. Yeah, it looks yeah. like some of the streets in Hollywood, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> Beverly Hills. Yeah. All right? I think Landon Cove is uh, heavily, heavily wooded. Um, and it, then in this proposal, I have three stumps on my property that are stumps and they have never been grinded out mm -hmm. is there and you will not be able to plant in a half of the front of my house because Same of the roots the roots from the plant that was chopped down that was diseased um digging a hole in there is good luck because it's kind of a jungle are you is that been taken into consideration the amount of root overgrowth that is in a lot of these properties Jose and I walked uh, a lot of the areas and we came across a few a few spots where we definitely need to and we were gonna like router and we were gonna kind of bridge that 
out when we came to it. But uh, I know I know Jake is working separately with our team uh, tree here, tree department to kind of like remove a, a lot of the trees that are already in the courtyards in the apartments in order to allow for more sunlight to come and also for the plants to perform better. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's uh, ones that were just like yeah. old, old roots and we either just leave the tree and put some nice de decorative uh, rock around it or we just remove the tree and, and really grind the roots so that we can actually put something. I saw... Uh, well, there's trees, I don't know the name of the trees that drop the little berries. They have a very intensive root surface that is about six to eight inches underneath the soil. And I spent an evening one time ripping it all out and stuff. So I'm just saying, if you have a rototiller next to you, because you're going to need yeah, it. Yeah, not even a rototiller. Right right yeah. <laughs> Another, my last thing is, you mentioned on Tuesday about, um, somebody mentioned that there'll be no grass being removed. Is that true or false? Yeah. Yes. I, I like grass. I think the kids need places to play, especially yeah. around the townhomes and stuff. But I was just wondering, grass is not being touched. Okay, so have we talked about overseeding with shade taller versions in the area where the grass is not growing because there's too much shade? Uh, are, we, are we sure we can address that? So I, I do think that that is a grass issue. Um, and it's a... Uh, and maybe, <coughs> and maybe more of a maintenance issue. Yeah. It may be. You know. uh, that we should be overseeing that. Yeah. It's, it's just fell apart. Yeah. I think we might get rain in the next Saturday. 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 Yeah. I, saw seven, I saw 70, 80 percent. I didn't want to put my patio back together when so I saw yes. it. So yes. <laughs> I will. I will give them so a bunch of seeds. Do you guys have a shade tolerant grass seed that you prefer? Uh, I haven't been seen in a while, so I need to go back to that. But <coughs> well, if it's going to rain on Saturday, yeah, no. I might go buy it tomorrow <laughs> 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 and sprinkle it out there. <laughs> Cover the mud spot. That's all I have. Great. Thank you. Thank you. So you can, can see from the numbers that, that we're not exactly close to the five hundred thousand that's in the uh, reserve. So what we budget. did. So what. So what I offered here was that we started with the bid, then added the roundabout, and came up with the seven ninety. And then there are additional items. Um, this size of project needs somebody that's dedicated to it. Um, and so, so with that in mind, 5% um, is, is what is, um, yeah. in, in regard to us, we have an agreement with the site authority to, that it's at 5%. And then the, diagnost the irrigation diagnostics, um, we have a proposal from um, Brightview for 5,000 so that put it at the um, 835 as we have um, from our level three um, uh, reserve study um, $500,000 puts the shortfall at 335 dividing that by 600 um, and then dividing it by 12 um, comes right at the, the 560 and and so um, let's go to the next slide <coughs> The, the question that I looked at was that there are several ways we could look at it. One would be, how, how could you fund this? One, if we there are there are monies there that <coughs> aren't designated for this, but in the common area reserves that could be divert, diverted to this um, on a one-time basis. It could also be part of the funds, not all, you know, not the entire um, three hundred thousand, three hundred eighty. Um, Three hundred fifty, whatever it is, and then the, the other um, um, okay, down to number three is whether site authority can request or figure out some other way to fund it that we don't we aren't aware of. Um, you know, we don't know everything that the site authority is capable of. And then number two was um, per the ground sublease in paragraph twenty four dash dash or d dash d or dot d um, in the common area it says that. Um, 25% in regard to capital improvements, there can be to finish out a project. Conceivably, you could make a one time assessment of 25% of the total amount um, that is um, charged that year. 
And so, um, in order to be equitable across the across the, the board, um, I took the apartments monthly fee, which is 192, where the the single families are 20384, and the townhouses are 28974. So I went with the 192. Um, that's what the price is this year. We we haven't gotten come up with what ours for next year is going to be yet. It hasn't been finalized. So that so that with that, that would be 48 dollars a month and that would come up to that's the 25 percent the maximum that we could do would be um, 576 which is below the, the number of above and so that kind of just verified that conceivably with the numbers that we have to date that a, um, a special assessment for the ground sublease to finish this um, capital improvement which I think um, is is in the interest of the entire community is something that um, could be presented. There have been conversations. Um, I don't know. Can I go there? Um, the, the, <laughs> the, the conversation of, of saying of saying that because this is a capital improvement for the entire community, is this something that at the point of sale um, that this this whatever the number is, let's say the five seventy six. 78 when it's paid would that it could be added on to the, the sale price so it actually becomes part of the value of the property um, and the community and so there there are um, those are kind of the discussions to date um, let's see I don't think there's anything else after that oh uh, yes there's a okay. <coughs> oh okay so go ahead the uh, so yeah, this would be the phase one recommendation. Um, and this would be the total for this, uh, these areas. Um, and this was after talking with Jake. This is kind of after what. Tuesday night. Yeah, this is kind <laughs> of what we came up with. Um, You've evolved, huh? Just a little bit, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is what we came up with after the conversations people had um, Tuesday and what we had with Jake as well. And, and part of the conversation was was being cognizant of what is in the budget for the reserves for this year. Right. Um, we know it's moving very quickly, you know, to, to make this happen. But yet, one of the things that um, we kind of latched onto too is to do all of the um, all of the roundabouts so that um, everybody is aware of the direction that we're going. Can, can I just, I just wrote this down, it's funny you said you haven't had that. There's four roundabouts. Does it make any sense to have the first two coming off of Camarillo Street um, be the responsibility of the 32 acre development? Because it's really the entrances into their development, which is going to have this That's possible. possibly, you know, a different kind of look, plant pipe. Pattern. Especially the first one. You know, I mean, yeah, I would agree. Okay. Um, At least know. the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, or you know, maybe both of them at all. And, and having, I agree with Toby, what he said on next door is having at least those first two in the natural state that they're in, um, now that you guys actually trim things and you know, neaten it up and take the weeds out, it's, it, they're not bad, you know, uh, where monies could be spent in an alleyway. <laughs> he did. I mean, I don't you know. I don't. The cost of two roundabouts isn't much, but I'm just saying, as you enter into that new phase, it may be. That was twenty five thousand dollars. So, yeah. so one of the things that that occurs to me is one of the purposes of this group is to dis discuss these kinds of things, and there really ought to be somebody here from Kennedy Wilson, Absolutely. who could discuss that issue with us at this at this meeting. Um, so I don't know who that would be. Who, who would that be? Ben. Ben. It's Ben. I don't think Mission Hills people, you know, that isn't their proof. Okay, well, so maybe, well, so maybe we can, we can, I'll, I will reach out to Ben and tell him that we're getting to the point where, you know, these are, that's one of the, you know, because some, in some ways some of the things that we're talking about to me are getting too much in the weeds for, for this group. Um, but when we start talking about allocating costs to different entities that are supposed to be sitting around this table, then it would be nice to get their input right, right here and now. I mean, the yeah. community is a little is more mindful of of the money and the and the reserves, and only because we've been waiting so long to get right. some decent landscaping. Right. Oh yeah. So no, so we're yeah. we're aware of that. <clears throat> Kennedy Wilson may be more 
geared towards let's get this done. With that being right. said, with that, I, I'm, I'm assuming that they're, yeah. I'm sure they're more eager than we are because they, they've done this, right. the leasing office and it's to their benefit. Maybe they want to say, okay, we get this moving, we'll kick in for X, Well, it seems, it seems like somebody, somebody should right. ask them, I don't know if it's you or you, Lori, but somebody should talk mm -hmm. to them and, and, and bring up this subject because if it can be pulled out of your budget, mm -hmm. then we should know that. I think you can, we can do that um, because Rosa and I had a conversation with Ben uh, as this was coming together, and that's how, how the whole conversation, and he brought up the, the question about the talent center, okay. you know, of how that would fit into this, this entire um, palette and how it would have continuity. And, and so that, that is something that um, we're very, he's, he's aware of it, and I called him, I was, I was really hoping that the Mission Hills people would be here, but they, you know, didn't get it. So, so that, but um, we can talk about that and we can have a conversation with him pronto on it. Yes. Do, do we get a bad meeting scheduled? Because it's really on the phone for Ben. Yeah. Not everybody has, has responded. Yeah. Okay. And he's part of that, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. Well, that makes sense. So, that uh, problem. Great. So at least this was this was so to show. Am I to understand that this is sort of a, a step down version of just prioritizing where we are we doing the show? No, no. What, what, this, what this would be is would we could would be this is what's in the budget this year. No, I remember. Okay. So, so in other words, if we could only spend this year's budget, if we would spend this year's budget, this, this is what, is we, what we could do. At the same time, okay. yeah. let's be cautious here. You know, it's like we want to make sure that what we're doing is something that we want to do. You know, and so it's like, um, and I, I agreed with Malia Hopper going, let's make sure that we want what we're doing. And that, and that's what brought up the, co the conversation about doing Lane New Cove, because that is, that is one of the, the areas that has sun issues and dirt issues and issues, has not, had issues and has not been addressed um, by anyone recently. And so that's, that is why um, in the whole project, it was like, if you're gonna do some areas, because there was at one point a conversation and saying, well, let's just spend what we got on our budget. And at that point, it would, they kind of went through an exercise and it basically left out Landing Cove and Smuggler's Cove and you know a lot of the townhouses that haven't been served. And in that conversation, I said, no, we have to figure out something different because that is not, not acceptable to to do Anna Cap and tell tell Smuggler's Cove and Landing Cove. Sorry, you know we don't have the money. But we're still doing Anna Cap. No, it's, 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 no, both sides. Yeah, it's both sides. It's just so narrow. Yeah, I'm sure. It's so they're doing just Anna Cap. Yeah. And, and that, and then they would do um, yeah. Landing Cove. Yeah. Both sides. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. yeah. make any change substantial. Yeah. We, we were at a hundred thousand dollars by the time we had landing cove we're now at 280. yeah so so it changed cool. the numbers changed substantially from Tuesday yep. this this was at a one hundred thousand dollar project Tuesday night when one we Sunday. One, one Sunday. one Sunday right. All right. Uh, we're still and it'll be a good beta substantial more to do landing cove and I, I, I think to be able to demonstrate that we can go and refurb one of our worst streets would at least give motivation to people that there was hope that the special assessment was worth was worth it to it, um, especially if we can allow people to capitalize it. Are the two on the bottom apartments in the bottom? Yes. 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 This is so, yeah. so I mean, um, yeah. is there any Parkside. benefit to bringing what we spend this year down and doing the apartments in the top? the Anna Capital, which is homes, and then Landing Cove, which is townhomes, it covers all three categories? Or is that just not something that Kennedy Wilson would maybe not want to go for because it, it doesn't fully do Anna Capital? Sure, so I mean, is that so, the possibility? So, so Kennedy Wilson is willing to write the check for their special <laughs> assessment of the public goods and to fully fund, independent of that check, to fully fund the refurbishment in the same plant palette for the entire town center that they want. 
Um, so they're, they're bringing substantial resources to the table and I would like to leave them motivated to do that. Um, so what's proposed I think provides enough community-based support for what they're trying to accomplish that the things they're doing independently that we will all benefit from can still flow. I'm just that, wondering if there's the any balance. reason that this palette, this, this doesn't work, that we're more, we've said more money, like what happens if after the first season, it's not work, it's just not. As long as we, I, as long as we solve the water issue, right, we will still improve in the plants. And, we, and we're adamant that we will not yeah, go forward until the water issue is 100%. We're working on it. We are absolutely. But I mean, if it, no, even no, if that means we delay it, we've gotten Even if it means we have to wait another entire year to address this, if the water issue is not resolved in time for planning, I will be standing on the table screaming with my back brace on. Do we have a date for irrigation testing? Do we what? Have a date for the testing of irrigation? The diagnostics? Working on it. We're, we're, we're talking and it's imminent. Okay, great. So when you say solving the water issue, okay. describe what you mean by so that. So the water, the water issue is whether or not we have adequate uh, functional irrigation in the places we plan to plant. So mm -hmm. what about, which did happen in drought years, there just isn't any water to run through those pipes because it's recycled and the water district says sorry we're, we're all out well that's why it has to be planted in a certain i don't know anything about planting season but at least they said that, that for three months we're going to be three times a week for three months yeah. so we've got to have that that's why i just so, when so, I, so we basically have to begin planting that way in april okay so that we're planting but when you're talking <laughs> about solving the water issue you're talking about the that's irrigation enough. Right. Yeah, no, but if we start planting yeah. now, we'll have some rain, hopefully, won't we? To offset yeah, the three times a week. <laughs> yeah, just start to offset those three times a week. I'm sorry. Just isn't that okay? True? So, so I want to I want to interrupt here because I because yeah. we've spent an hour on this and I was told it was going to be 15 minutes and that's okay, <laughs> but we have a half an hour left. So um, I don't know what else is, I mean, maybe this was gonna dominate our meeting no matter what, and that's fine with me, but I, don't, I wanna leave time for other things that need to be addressed as well. Um, are, 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 but are we done with this? Uh, can we just have one more slide? Yeah, sure. You, you pretty much, so. it's yeah, a break, okay. breakdown, so I, we added, I think the only difference from Tuesday is we added, uh, because we added that land use code, and then we added a project management fee, and, we also threw the diagnostic in there. And my commitment, our commitment was that, and I don't, I'm not saying something that I shouldn't, but I, my commitment was that that's, uh, if this goes through, that will be reimbursed in whatever to the community, the 5,000. So I, I I told Jake, I, this is, you you, you you can apply to whatever you, we, we need to do more tillage, if we, if we are the ones that need to jump into the irrigation to move this forward, like you apply it however you want to apply it. And then, so that's the total that reflects the other page. And this is just like stuff that we, I mean, uh, notes that we want to be mindful of, <coughs> that stuff that we already talked about. Like right. irrigation is important, uh, timing is important, so it's all this stuff that we already talked about. And so, Bill, we do recognize our water bill goes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we do recognize that. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, yeah. So, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We appreciate you for a quick turnaround. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, so I look forward to hearing hear from you, you guys you and we'll really make good. whatever adjustments we yeah. need to make and partner with you in whatever shape or form. And we're, we're here to partner with, with you guys. Yeah. Thank I've been you. here the whole time, so, <laughs> and I'll continue being here as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you too, well, let's, let's move on with our meeting. I don't know, if I'm going to guess if there's nothing, if there's no Kennedy Wilson multifamily report because there's nobody here to make that report. That's done. Uh, Jake, what do you have? Um, Basically, I was kind of bringing up to date where we are as far as the budget and the building advisory group. 
is that um, that that Kenny Wilson um, properties did present uh, their initial budget. Thank you. For um, which was which was um, by the contract due on the 31st of January. And so we, we went through that and we're, we're working through um, those items last night or Tuesday night, Sandy presented the status of the budget um, to the AJC and that basically is, is a repeat of, of where we are. Things are being um, solidified and at the same time recommendations as far as making sure that any um, increases, reasonable increases, inflationary increases are addressed and, and shown. We're working on how to show things as, as contingencies so that um, the, money, the money is there, but we um, acknowledge that it is, it, it is a percentage, like for instance with the, with the trash, that we're anticipating there would be a 7% increase, which is more than 3%, you know, and, and those kind of things, which may or may not happen. And so we're trying to get those things that kind of bit us this year and at least put them put them there. We have not had a, had a meeting after we have made those, all of those inflationary and adjustments. Um, we kind of went on actuals for the first part, and now we're going back and, and readjusting them. But we are looking at again, um, second year in a row of probably a double digit increase on the operating side of our budget before we get to um, to the reserve side of the, of the budget. So, Gloria, how, how involved are you in this? Jake, Jake has been fantastic. I'm involved in the reverse, as has Kate with the lion's share um, on the member side. But I was, we, we all met. The, the budget advisory group, I think, okay. is functioning yeah. very it's well right. because yeah. it's, it, it's, it's basically three or four yeah. of us are sitting yeah. in the room. That's right. with yeah. you yeah. And I understand that yeah. Rose has been yeah. invaluable. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and even one of our most vociferous community members logs Rose on yeah. a <laughs> daily basis. Too. He's supposed so, to be here. <laughs> well, the day comes, so it is, so let me speak okay. for it. Well, I just want to be sure that there's, you know, I see my function here just making sure that you are communicating and that things are moving forward, and then if there's issues that we get stuck, then, <laughs> then we present that to the, to the board as, as problems that we're having, but ideally this all results in, in you just and a budget that you guys come up with that the site authority approves and we move forward and it isn't it isn't all of us we don't vote we don't we just we just try and make sure that we resolve the issues so we keep moving down the road so when is this do when does this have to be finalized um, we're presenting it to the board uh, may may 4th yeah. okay, right. okay. but but our, okay. but, but Rosa and Lori have committed to the rest of us that our interim deadline is march okay so that okay. what Good. we are doing okay. What the community-based piece of this budget will be done by March so that they can have time to integrate it with the rest of the site authority budget for presentation in May. Okay. And, and that puts us a good seven, eight weeks ahead of where we were last year. Well, I think that's terrific. And I think it'll be nice to be able to talk to tell the board that this was a group effort and that the budget was, you know, it included the residents and, 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 uh, and there was a, a dialogue. So that's, yeah, okay. Good. And it includes multifamily too. Right, right. it does. Yes. And, yeah. and, and I mean, yeah. that's right. when I say when the budget advisory group gets together, if we don't want to have a conversation with Ben, yeah. at least we pull him in because of the budget and we can yeah. hit him on other right. issues yeah. at the same and, time. And, and, and he seems like he's always been very, um, oh, he's well, amenable to, to trying to work solve problems. So let's just say it that way. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, just a couple of other a couple of other uh, updates um, regarding the replacement of the windows. Um, we have come up with a scheme or a scenario of how to approach it. There are three levels. The first level is whether the um, it's in the weeds. I'm sorry. The um, that it it has to do with that are they functional? If the balancers aren't functional, if the windows don't close, we get them to we get them to operate. And then if there is something wrong with the pane of glass that has a, a life safety issue, like that there's mold growing in the airspace, 
um, and or if it's leaking or something like that, that it, it needs to be addressed immediately, that that's a level two, which we go ahead and do. And then level three are, are those that um, would appear to have basic example is the oil canning, that it shows that they've been compromised in some way. Is it keeping water out? Yes. Um, is it something that, per the ground sublease, it would say, yes, it is the, the, the reserve's responsibility to replace? Yes, it says that, and we've, we've agreed that the ground, lease says, the, some ground, the ground lease says to do that. How that gets paid for, we're making a list, and then we'll determine when there will be a, a budgeted way of, of addressing it so that, um, so that either we put it in, it's still in the conversation of whether we do you know, $15,000 for windows next year and we put it under as a contingency under the townhomes and when that $15,000 has been used that then we put it in the next year. You know, as long if it isn't a life safety issue or a functional issue in that sense. So that's that's with the windows. The other thing that has come up, which um, just came up this afternoon, um, having to do with the townhouse HVAC systems, and um, I there's one individual who is ready to put in a new HVAC system and is kind of waiting on us as far as what to do with the um, existing heaters that the ground sublease says we're responsible to replace, whether that is a, a credit or whether it is something that the person replaces it and just as, as you can include in your, at the time of sale, your um, air conditioner, you put in a whole new unit and you can also include the heater. I mean, you know, because they're integrated units. And so that came up this afternoon, isn't fully fleshed out, but that was what this individual was suggesting, you know, that he could include, just like with the air conditioner, he could include his replacement heater if he does it himself. And so, you know, how that works to be determined. But it's, 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 it's really a, um, it's something that is it's coming up and it's at the door. door. So, so is there something wrong with his heater? Or he's just it's on the it's on the last leg. It's like that his he said he he was he was when he talked to the, the contractor it was like he was feeling it was going to go out this winter and it did not. And but he's already purchased the air conditioning unit and the heater. You know, he's kind of one of these That's like a good salesman. Yeah, that HVAC guy. Well, well, he bought it. Yeah, yeah. I would say HVAC. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, he's, he's thinking it's going to go out, but it hasn't gone out. It hasn't gone so, out. And he's he already has, bought it. He's already bought it. <laughs> well, that doesn't seem like it's some, should be. The, well, I don't this know. Scenario, I, I'm, I'm, I'm being sarcastic. Be and I'm, right? What the air conditioning? Whoa. Well, from no, I mean, the because it's not broken. No, 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 no. Wait, it wouldn't be from the reserves oh, at all. Okay, so this no, is no, we're we're adding. We're talking, we yeah, need to heaters. Okay. No, no, and it's going to be a problem in the future and, and not just this one. So it is something that needs right. to be Right. We had talked about putting, with the with the reserve study, we had talked about, um, from the reserve study, it's about $3,000 a piece to replace. If there are 200 of them, you know, we have $600,000. So the question would be is, that, that says it would all, all be due in year 20. We're in year 15. So it's like, okay, do we use any of that, any of that money for that replacement, or is there an alternative saying you can add it on as part of your capital improvement value, or do you give them a credit? You know that that they say, look, I've paid this, and I understand my credit's three thousand, and we credit them three thousand on that on that purchase of a heater. Whoever writes that up, if that's the way to go, make sure that that person acknowledges that they're agreeing to not abide right. by the ground sublease right. and not come back and then yeah. try and yeah. double yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. But his motivation for replacing the entire unit is that he gets a much higher efficiency rate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And having sure. done this yeah. Um, yeah. and watched what my Texas electricity bills did when I did the massive replacement, which was... But the key yeah. thing is, is at this point with this particular scenario, it's voluntary. It's, not it's like voluntary. It's, he is. Yeah. He isn't saying I want money yeah. from you. No, he's, no. he's. He's. He's saying I want to do this. I want an integrated system. I don't have an air conditioner, mm -hmm. so I want to put it in 
because I've got it, I want to put it all in. And, and so... What happens so if he sells and somebody um, buys and they have a problem with their heater and now we have a heater that's not... That's a it, it's a private party heater, yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, that's why so I'm saying there needs to be some agreement related right. to the ground yeah. subject. Exactly. I was going to ask is, what has the board, it's been a year, what is the board, the site authority board, your people what what have they decided on as far as levels of reserve but that's a different issue um, but what have they have there been any discussion about whether or not they stick with the ground sublease and the site authority is responsible for the uh, windows and the tile roofs and the HVAC units yeah, it's been a year, and I haven't. I went through all everything from this. Well, this past year. I think. What I think. I think yeah, the problem is. It. Well, because it's because it's the ground sublease. In other words, okay. in other words, th 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 that's what it so is. There's no negotiation. Well, they can't. You can't change. That's why I want. That's why I so, suggested. So this, do we open so the door is, to making so, some modifications? Because so this guy should get reimbursed from the, from for his for the furnace. Right. Yeah. No, for the heater. Sure. Yeah. Okay. yeah. No, he shouldn't be reimbursed from the heater because he's not. It's not. It's it's still working. He shouldn't be right. If his heater breaks, and then then right now the way the ground sublease is, they would have to pay for it. And then if he chooses this to is one of the reasons that I thought top, perhaps he's, opening he's a discussion about. about this. But he shouldn't get any right now. Out. It's not broken. So, okay. And we may not replace it at the same level as that he's requesting to replace it at if he's getting a higher windows. And so those are all the considerations. So, so, exactly. So, over time, there is a policy in this whole area that we're going to need because as the systems break, um, he's not the first or the only human who will want to do a more energy efficient solution. And, and we ought to encourage that energy efficient solution and we ought to figure out how we're going to encourage it. Um, so it's... Right. So again, I would, I, this is again the reason that I, wanted to and maybe I, open that door just because it's a, it's a, it does solve some problems that are just not going to go away um, you know and well and that's that's the broader conversation right yeah so I think so, it, it has to go and I understand how somebody could be very upset about that notion but anyway just we can present it in written papers yeah. on that later right yeah yeah, yeah. and then we we deal with the pluses and minuses of the conversation. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the ground subject is just has been determined that, that it says what it says, and, and it's well, not a matter of getting an interpretation to change what it says. It, it says they're responsible. Has that come back? Yeah, sort of like, I haven't heard from the what was decided on that. It is one of the options. Or was Well, I didn't know that it was supposed to be. It's very well. Well, I think Jake wanted an interpretation, and I think the answer that came back to him was to go by the ground sublease. Well, okay. well, no, what it, what, how I interpreted what came back was here's a methodology to do it. By the fact that we, we made the levels and said, yes, we're going to repair them, okay? And that the level two, you know, the level one deals with screens. And the, you know, little piddly stuff. And number two, yes, it is more money, but it's a life safety affects people's health. And then the third would be, in the long run, yes, it needs to be replaced. Per the ground sublease, it says you need to replace it because it, it because the owners of the townhomes have put money aside into the reserve to do that, which is what the ground sublease says. So yes, it will be replaced. And all that, all that, how I interpreted it was that I got I got direction from the site authority to, to say Jake that isn't your decision alone to spend to spend these these monies that you put a proposal together and say here's the list here's first Sandy Boy's fifth on the list and that you know I'm the, not even on it yet so you know but, I'm not even. But, but, I know. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying so it's like that so that the site authority who who does anything over four thousand dollars from my contract if it's over, that they go, okay, we know what we're doing, we know where the money's coming from, go ahead and get it done, Jake. Okay, so in the meeting minutes for this meeting today, can we can we have in there saying that the site authority has come back to this this group, the uh, <coughs> head, and has said our request of eight months, 10 months, whatever it was ago, to have the site authority review whether or not those things in the ground sub lease belong so when, there. So can you can come back? When because you have notes here when we when we made that request, 
No, we don't have a site authority. Oh, so, well, yeah, I do have, I can tell you when the site authority said they would review it okay. and take it under advisement, but okay. it hasn't come back. The site authority will, uh, to review the obligation, the site authority for replacing tile and garage doors, furnitures, windows. Okay, and that's and a site authority thing. Yeah, that's a okay. site authority meeting. Okay. Yeah. And, and I think maybe it's just a lack of communication because I think it was determined yeah. that, and it was just never, the ground lease says what the ground lease says. So in other words, to ask somebody what the interpretation of that is, it was just simply, it is what it says it is, which is that the site authority is responsible. And I think what Jake is, is addressing is the methodology of, of how we do that. But, the, but And that is the issue. Right. That is the issue that you can't change the, what the ground sublease says just by saying, oh, you know what, we decided we're not going to, we're not going to go along with no, that part of the ground sublease. Ago, this group said that we okay. would go to the well, maybe that's my fault for not for not coming back with that and allowing this confusion because I, I apologize because maybe that. But, but I think we now have a couple of pathways. We have yes. the pathway where we walk through processes that implement the ground sublease as written. We now have a separate path for the door that you've opened that says if we were going to make adjustments Excuse to the ground sublease, what would we recommend and what would the consequences of those recommendations be? Yeah, and we have so to spend some time thinking about it. Right? I see us yeah. have, yeah. having two pathways to yes. walk now, not right. just one. So here, let me exp let me tell you my interpretation of it <clears throat> because there's other things in the ground sublease, and frankly, if you were going to open that door, there's probably a few there's some little minor tweaks that could be made that would be helpful to everybody. But the ground sublease is very specific, and one of the reasons that you can't just change it is that everybody in here kind of signed off on that, and and it's a recorded document. It's part of your, um, I mean, it's, it's part of your ownership interest in that property. Um, your lender relied upon it if you have a lender. So what the ground sublease says, and it's the one day I didn't bring my book. <laughs> I noticed it was gone. <laughs> but basically, what it says is that the site authority can amend the ground sublease. Um, without a, a, a major vote of all of the owners and lenders in these very specific areas, as long as you don't step into some other areas. And one of the areas would be this maintenance issue. I don't think that the site authority wants to make a change that is unpopular with the, with the residents or that isn't supported by the residents, but but the ground sublease allows that in, in some very limited ways. Um, you know, like for example, I think our budget says we're supposed to have our budget by some date that's in, that we never do it by. April. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that would be something that you can just change, you know, the site authority. But something that has more impact on reserves and all that, then I'm sure that the site authority would want to have that. And that's the reason. And again, the other part I don't understand, I know Jim Considine just says, oh my God, don't make me go to the, oh, through that whole bureaucracy up to the chancellor's office to get approval for something, you know, unless it's really important. So I've said to him, well, this might be really important, you know, for, for the next 20 years of people who own here and how this operates. But, but if, if, if Sandy, Sandy gave a presentation at Tuesday's HEC about the, about this is specific to the townhomes, just as this whole right. window for right. this garage right. door is. We have such a shortfall because we're at 51, 57 percent. 57. Right? Yeah. So I really think, I think that's why this becomes more crucial because it's either coming out of this hand or this hand for the town homeowners. Right. And so you've got this potential. The way I see three things happening. One is with the landscaping, a possible upping the can fees for the whole community for one year. So that's you're getting that's one hit. The second one is uh, the normal, um, the, the budget. Yeah, the, it's the operating and it's anywhere right. from 80 to 108, it was substantial, the possible mm -hmm. increase. So that's another one. We're looking one. at a double then, digit increase. And then the right. third one is something that we haven't had a chance and maybe we can talk to with about in the next couple of months, is a whole idea of, is it a possibility of, of earthquake insurance? Because I think that we cannot ignore that. because. Landscaping, your windows, none of that means anything if you have a bir big earthquake right. and, you're, and you lose your house, uh, right? Totally so those are three things that are kind of looming over us. And I think that if you're, the, the money-wise, the one that you discussed on Tuesday, the, the budget, if the town homeowners, if they're 
monthly CAM fees go up substantially, double digits, then you almost have to look at, okay, you're paying that, then that's not just gonna be paid for one year, that's just gonna be, that's gonna be your new rate, okay? So you add that up, and then you weigh that against <coughs> what would the reserve percentage be if you, if you amended the, the ground sublease and took that out. Would that mean that you wouldn't have to raise it that much? Because I think it's just coming as a big sting to the town homeowners because it, it feels like it just has not happened the way it should have over all these years, the CAM fees. And now we're kind of, the current residents are paying for it. Whereas other people who have lived here and moved on, they didn't get, they weren't left holding the bag. And it kind of feels like right now we got this, you know, we all want to be safe. We want our community to look good, but we, we want to be smart about it. And I kind of feel like the, the budget committee, I mean, I'm not part of it, but I think they're doing a great job of getting down in, into the weeds of stuff, which is wonderful. So I think we really need to, you said you have the meeting in March, to just have more conversations about this and kind of get moving on it. Yeah. So, so let me just put the other side to this. One of the reasons all these things are in the ground sublease is maintaining a, a uniform level of maintenance in the community. And when you pull things like this that deal with the visual, what you can see from the outside of the house, uh, not so much the premises, but windows, garage doors, those kinds of things that are external things. If we make them the responsibility of the townhome owner, we potentially lose our ability to maintain architectural control. No, you you maintain it. You know, as a matter of fact, you tighten it, and you and you are you, you very carefully specify what materials are used. So people who are paying extra all this time, more than the single families, and now all of a sudden they're responsible for for this, and and they're not. I, guess I don't ever see putting the roofs. Yeah. In, in this conversation. Okay, no, 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 thank no. you. Would never be okay. because, because that's a, a few building other. by unit. Yeah. That's and a the, building by building advantage, right. not a unit by unit in, advantage. In just typically, in, it's, it's, I, I don't want to say that all townhomes operate this way, but most townhomes operate where an owner is responsible for their furnace, their air conditioning, their windows. I'm sorry to say that the furnace air conditioner. I, I have to tell people stuff. Furnace, so. fur, yeah. Well, furnace and, and I mean, if you know anybody who lives furnace. in a townhome, just ask them. I mean, I'm sure that they'll tell you. Yeah, I, I have to take care of my okay. my air conditioning yeah. system. If my windows break, I or you know my windows. So, and the way they handle it is you 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 have an architectural committee okay. that you can't change those windows without approval by that architectural committee, and that architectural committee, from time to time, specifies what can be used because. You know, it might change from time to time, depending on what's available. But in any event, you can control that. Similar to the contractor that that yeah. usually can yeah. approve or yeah. the yeah. would approve yeah. to install solar. Right. Yeah. Solar. So, the same, the same the same idea. idea. So it would, and so there you can you can have that control and and. Um, Okay. Sort of like the paint with Chris. You can. You've got. Yeah, and if you've got to pay in, for it, if you, you still have to stay yeah. within your it's not staying in wheelhouse. The home. Yeah. In the town home, it could be considered say the capital improvement. Right. Um, and for the ground right. sublease, there can be a change to the capital improvement. So Correct. Can right. Correct. See, I Correct. think that is an option that's more palatable to people. Rather yeah. than I do, and I yeah. He's going yeah. up so much. Yeah. So and and that would take. There'd be a lot of just anyway. I wanted to open the door to that, and I see that I have. <laughs> so, so that's good. Hey, we have very short time, and 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 I do have to leave at 5:30. So, um, what other things? You know, I will be reporting to the site authority on Monday. So, are there other things that should be that I should be aware of right now? Or it sounds to me this is the real burning issue, and it's really the it's really the townhomes. Well, we're, we're looking, as of the Level 3 study, at a right. $1.3 million shortfall right. in the townhome reserves. And that $1.3 million comes down to $6,300 and some odd dollars per townhome. So that, that's a huge um, 
the amount of money to try to recover the shortfall. Then if you look at the numbers necessary to be ready for the next time these expenses get to us, right. you're, you're making up for the past and you're, and you're putting money aside for the future. Right. Um, we are looking at, we currently ask town homeowners to pay $70 and change. $70.50 to be exact. Mean more. No, no, that's what we asked them to pay today. And that's what we've been asking them to pay only since the 2016-17 fiscal year or something. $70 yeah. for right. what? What does that cover? The contribution to the to the townhome specific reserve. So the townhome specific reserve. Prior to that, we were only asking for like $60. So I have to, just in fairness to the site authority, I have to tell you, I have been here since 2003. I was the chair of the University Glen Understood. Board, and, and I, I want to at least, um, I'm not excusing anything, but I will say that in around 2006, 2007, when the economy was starting to become apparent that we were in, in trouble, um, it was time to start addressing the reserves completely different board of, of uh, in every way even the site authority board was different but I was there and I absolutely remember because I was a really really unpopular guy because I said we need to start increasing the reserves and starting to reserve for this and every one of the homeowners particularly the town homeowners said oh my god it's the worst possible time for this the units are new they don't need anything we're all struggling just to pay any bill that we have it's the worst economic please don't raise the dues and and i said to them you know you're gonna have to pay for this one day it doesn't go away and they said we know we understand but it can't be right now we can't afford it so the site authority then listened and allowed and allowed some of this to happen, but not by negligence or by just ignoring it or not knowing about it. It was by design and by request. So now we're here. The place is, you know, uh, it's, it's sort of the perfect storm of, you know. So, so now yeah. we're here, and right. nobody is saying we're here by malfeasance no, or anything yeah. else. We're saying we're here by, by, by where we are. But where we are is a million three and a oh, half. I, I don't. Oh, I know. That's and, real. That's and real. And we need to put similar right. amounts right. of money. So um, our reserve study tells us um, that we would need to be asking town yeah, homeowners to put a hundred and eighty dollars a month into reserves. Can we town home reserves only? And we should similarly be be putting. $35 into the common area reserve. So we would be asking town homeowners to make contributions to reserves in the $210 a month range. That's basically three times what they're currently paying. We can't, by the ground sublease, make those kinds of increases. No, I understand. Yeah, it doesn't in, allow. In any one given year. Okay. Okay. Um, and given the fact that we are this year going to have to use, we've got 25%, we can make an increase to right, these numbers. Right, right. We're going to have to use half of that this year to handle the operating budget. To handle the operating budget issues. And so where we are is we have a, a moderate income community that we'd like to protect, which is where you were yeah, in yeah. 2006. So a moderate income community. But what we are looking at is there is no way for us to, especially on the operating side, look at um, <coughs> anything other than real costs. We can't reduce the cost of right. trash collection. Right. No, we no, can't no, no. reduce the cost of other right. things. So right. you get it. Yeah. But well, that's, and, and, and that's nor can basic. anybody else living in any home anywhere where those we, expenses go up. What so we spent Tuesday yeah. night trying to explain to the community. Understood. To put that out there and begin the conversation. And a year and a more than a year ago, when I wanted to begin this conversation with the community, and this group didn't want me to. Um, and, and therefore, I didn't. Um, we've only, instead of starting this conversation a year ago, we're starting it now. 
starting it now is good. It's better than nothing. It's better than, it's better than not having the conversation started. Okay. And I think we're in a better place to have the conversation now than we were a year ago. So the delay has had some really positive benefits, but it also means that we're, we're that much further from having a, a community that actually internalizes and understands the nature of the problem. So we also in, will incorporate with our operations report um, in the site that we go like the complex solution providers and the analysis of where it, it, they explained it during the reserve study where we're, where we're at in ending the ending trip and compared to other communities where are the townhomes the justified um, reserve balance of other communities and um, the, the the complex solution provider that the average is 60 percent uh, so the threshold of where we are in the reserve for the townhomes at 57 percent we're not too off in where we're headed um, so the idea is we're looking at the reserve we're looking at these items of the envelope and vetting that in into we vetted it, it all into this last reserve study of why the shift in that percentage so i think it needs to be clear of why the the decrease occurred so, on the reserve so one of the issues we have to come to a consensus about is what is an appropriate funding level right. and one of the pieces of information that rosa got brought back to us that i think is illustrative is that the irvine community <laughs> Uh, its funding level is currently 73 percent. Right. Oh, that's so if However, the, they're a much older community. So again, well, we're not. It, it, it means it means they've been through a cycle. A though. cycle. They, okay, okay, so they're already into cycle number two, and if they made it through cycle number one at a 73 percent funding level, it means Kevin Olson's plan of this kind of pay-as-you-go approach. Mm -hmm. um, maybe can work in our kind of community because they've made it through a whole cycle. Right. I mean, you whispered that in my ear the other day and I went home and kind of started playing with it in my conceptual way, not my numbers way, because that's how I think. Right. And, and it looks to me conceptually because they're into basically midway of cycle two mm -hmm. that that we might be able to conceptually hang our hat on that. Don't know. You guys, I mean, you, you get the numbers a whole lot better than I do. So um, I, I, I look for your advice. Okay, so does anybody have anything else that, that they think is, is critical? I actually have a list of things that the <laughs> HAC asked me to bring, and one of them requires. Um, Kennedy Wilson to be present yeah. at the table, so I can't bring that one up. Um, and the others, I think, I will just write up and make sure that if I'm not here the next month, that Gabrielle can bring them up. I know, sure. Okay. How that we do with you. Okay. But we're rooting for you. Can I just one, <laughs> one question? Yeah, yeah go ahead. In reading all these site authority meeting minutes today, um, the house that would the site authority bought for three ninety five. Last year, yeah, yeah. I'm catching up on the um, How in two months did it sell for 480? I'm sorry, 480? 480. So it went in two months from, I guess, the maximum, or unless the site authority didn't buy it for, you know, I thought 395 would be what the house would go for to anybody. I think that's what this program then, is about, Mark. In other words, I think it was an opportunity the for the the site authority had the option to buy it at that price, and then still maintaining the the level of um, you know a, a, a discount from a market value home. They sold it for 480. I mean, and and um, and that is the part of the part of this program. Where, so now I don't think that the site authority intends to do that a lot. That was really Lori's um, Lori Lang's uh, kind of. Can we do something like that, though, to make up for some of this lost reserve? Like, if somebody sells a townhome, can we tack on a, an assessment to help make up for this one point three million? I just million? didn't. I just didn't want. I, it seems to me as if that's a possible precedent for anybody who's been here longer than ten years. The site authority buy it on a short-term loan from them. They turn it around in a month or two, list the thing, and it's up on an extra hundred thousand, sixty-eight thousand. And just it was shocking. The number jumped so high. 
That's all. Yeah. I, I just was curious. I, I personally that's think that's, that's one of the downsides of living here is that you are restricted in your per, in your sale price, but on the other hand, you are buying something that you, that you couldn't buy anywhere else. So you're um, for the same for the same price. Um, what and, and so you're so somebody's that, bought something for four eighty, and if they put in a bunch of capital improvements, now you're getting the house close sales, to market value. Uh, that's the Tyler danger Harper there for me. Right. A little bit, but, yeah. but I, I don't have a problem. I'm not, yeah. Because you can't get a single family home for 480 No, you can't. In California. No, like the last three single family houses <laughs> sold for 460 so why don't we price this one at about that same price? Something like that. And Title 30 does have that, right? Oh, I know. And again, the whole, you know, I, we, we have to keep, I have to keep reminding everybody that the whole purpose of this is to raise revenue to build the university. Right. And, and, and that was the reason that it was, that it was done. And, and there's always, you know, there's a compromise. Everybody but could we do something like that to help offset the, the reserves that were? That we Are had we? We're having the conversation. <laughs> okay. Okay. Just an idea. So that's an idea. Yeah. What I think is good is that the conversation is being had. In terms of how we cut down on reserves, the conversation right. is broad and deep. Yeah. And well, and the and the good news is is we're having it. Right. Because it, before nobody wanted to talk about it, and I don't recall ever discouraging this discussion. But if you say we did, I guess we did. But um, you know, I, I, it's important that we're it, it's important that we're doing this now. And, Try being and in the back to, because the longer it goes. The worse it gets. Okay, thank you, okay. everyone. A lot of stuff going on.